Are you interested in creating those cool glitchy vocals like you find them in Asterix Adana? I show you how and if you stay till the end of the video I show you some additional bonus techniques which I use in my own tracks. So let's have first a look at the original uh, Asterix Adana here. Um, one thing to notice this is in a different key so I just um, warped it a little bit to the current kick and bass I have. Also the style of the kick and bass and of the sound selection is different of course. But let's have a look what is inside here. Um, so I will play this uh, quickly. So it starts with this uh, drums and rising here and then falls into silence. And we can hear, um, actually there's a technique here that the vocal is, um, the reverb is reversed, so to announce the vocal a little bit. And then we play the vocal uh, one time full, so it um, is playing at least till here, but at some point it then starts uh, stuttering. And it doesn't stutter uh, immediately, it increases the stuttering a little bit from the start, so that it's not so abrupt. Um, so check this out again, so we have here probably the reverse uh, reverb. Sucking into the vocal, then we have the vocal. It goes definitely till here and then it starts repeating somewhere, um, I guess from here in that section it starts repeating. But it's still stable, um, so there's no stuttering there. Then comes the stuttering in. And then the stuttering increases. And we have like a little drum fill here. And then it goes with the kick and bass. And there are some effects in between like here. Or here. Or like this pad here. Then we have also a snare in here. And then we have here this little breathing which sucks into the next section. We have a drum hit which ends the section. But the actually interesting thing is then here. Um, we have a rise in the vocal. Then at the same time the vocal, the lows are a little bit removed which amplifies the rise. And there is a noise in the background. Actually if we look into the analyzer. can see that the vocal moves and I guess and we will see that in a second how this is done but it's probably a frequency shifter or a comp filter um, but I guess it's more a frequency shifter so let's see how we can make our version of this and just to be said this is a very raw version for the sake of this tutorial I mean you can craft this uh, way more uh, better so the first thing is what we will need is we will need a vocal sample we can use something like loop cloud or splice so you can take any uh, vocal pack. Uh, what I would look for is a vocal which is very stable in key and very long. So let's uh, check this out. You can put it in something like Indian vocal. I mean you see the pitch is moving a bit so I would prefer actually something which is really, really stable for that, um, where you don't have many like different pitches in that. I think that makes it easier. But if you do it right, you can also use something like this. Uh, what I would avoid is maybe something like this. 
which has like syllabs and all that. So you want to really have like a long shot, which does something, some mantra call or some singing. Um, so that would be perfect for that vocal. And I already selected some vocals um, and then decided for one. So that was the ones I got into my closest selection. But this, in the end, I decided against because it's also very short, all the syllabs. Something like that is better, but as you can see, it already has a lot of pitch movement in there. This has a very stable end. I mean, there is still some movement before, but we are actually interested mostly in the ending part. Um, so this this vocal I think is perfect. It's not in the key of my track, just to mention it. It's like six semitones um, above uh, the key of my track, but it's fine because I don't have any melodies or stuff in here. I will use this. And you can also try to stretch it, for example, by doubling the length of the vocal and then using one of the warp modes. Um, so that's something you can try as well if you have a shorter uh, vocal sample. So then you can extend it a little bit, but I actually didn't even need to here. So what I did next is I took this vocal sample, put it in here fully, so like this, and I set up a recording channel, which takes the recording from this vocal. And I would do it like post effects here. And then, you turn off all the effects you want to use later because in the end we will re-import um, this vocal here. So the only thing we need is a delay because we want to make it even longer. And we will make this longer by having um, here this unlimited sign here. So you need to find really good settings. And, and then you put it on unlimited here. And I had to check out which delay I use. And I decided for um, here a 216 triplet delay because that fitted really well when I compared it with um, the Arana track. Because one thing you need to notice in here is if you zoom closer to the waveform, then you can actually see that this this is not here on the normal grid. So, and you can also hear it. And I switch it into triplet grid, and then you can see basically that each shot um, contains two um, 16 notes here in triplet grid. So that's actually why I have chosen this uh, delay here. To show you quickly on a wave which is a little bit more distinctive than this whole vocal thing, um, here I imported this hi-hat here and I set one side to plus 33% and one side to minus 33%. So basically that's the plus side and that's the minus side. And you can see when it's set to two and minus 33% that it exactly has this distance of two sixteenths in the triplet grid, like the vocal from the Adana track. And once you have this, then you can record it out into, um, into our recording channel here. So we will just, uh, we'll just need to record this. Be sure to have no reverb or a set in post effects. And then you get like this little nice sausage here, um, which basically contains all the same shots and those I then re-imported down here and merged them with the original um, sample by crossfading from the one sample into the other one. And um, from there, I just copied it because the the rhythm here had like little gaps then um, when, when the kick and bass started. So we have always this. So there's like a little short break and um, I try to emulate that. Um, so it stops actually here. 
so you can not really hear the vocal. Maybe there's a little reverb or something on it. Um, so you can just copy it. But one thing which is really important is um, as it doesn't loop perfectly, you will, if you chain it like this, then you always need to make a little fade um, to avoid clicks. And once we have that, we have basically extended the vocal to unlimited lengths um, by having this delay, re-importing it and then stretching it out by just copying it. We can apply some effects to it. I EQ the vocal a little bit so that it has more of that uh, low end because it actually feels quite harsh and it's missing a few frequencies in here. And I could have actually done this a little bit better with like me even an OTT or something to spread it out. But I guess the main purpose of tutor this tutorial is to show you this a rhythmic technique here. So at the moment we have it like this. If I would play this. So it's already repeating, but it's not really gated um, a lot. We can reach this by, for example, placing an LFO tool, setting it also to triplets. And um, I put it here on 116 triplets now. And let me record this out quickly so that we can see it. And you can already feel that it gets uh, closer to this uh, to this idea here in the original track. And um, if we place it a bit here to the side, um, we can also see that this is like gating it uh, nicely here. Um, so this this shots actually they fall down a bit more. Maybe I gated it too much here, so we could actually have it more like this here to come closer closer to the original um, sound here. Um, but you will need to shape it in a way how you like to have it gated. That's the most important thing. And once we have this, then there's one more thing because this sounds a bit static. So if we have a look again at the original one, then you can see if we look into the spectrum analyzer, So you see left and right is bouncing um, differently and we can achieve this by adding a little auto pan here, for example, to uh, 116 here or whatever rate, maybe even like a rate which is not on the grid could be interesting to make the shots a little bit less static because everything is repeating uh, now. And then we get this. And from there on, I will jump to this last section here with the rise. Um, so I added then a frequency shifter and the trick is actually to not do it too crazy. So it's over the whole section, it's like increasing 300 Hertz. Um, so maybe we can go even with less. You can also try with a comp filter to get this effect of um, rising by having like a comp filter, like sweeping through the signal. And I added like a little bit of reverb because the thing kind of like goes towards the end into the reverb. And I did add like a cut here. So this basically should be here. And then we have this increase here in the end. Uh, one important thing, as this is all triplets, um, we also need to have like a triplet groove. So for example, I put here the normal kick, but then had um, this uh, triplet groove here. So this is also on the triplet grid here. So we have uh, here the kick and theoretically we could even um, shorten the kick um, a bit to either like fit it in here or maybe make it even a bit longer. So that's something I didn't try around uh, long, but I guess this is kind of like the essence of this um, section. Um, so of course, everything depends on the selection of the sample. And I went we're really quick here, but if you take time to find a really good sample, which is also in the key maybe of your track, which suits it a little bit better, um, then this can go really nice. Um, and yeah, I guess even if that technique um, is the same, you can go very creative by finding your own um, cool vocals for that. I just want to show you if we 
would put, put this a little bit more into the key of our track. Um, that this sounds a little bit more consistent, but then the vocal kind of like loses its power. And of course we could decorate everything with little effects or maybe pads or little risers to make it a bit more interesting. And if you want to learn even more about uh, rhythmic and making cool rhythmic leads or rhythmic vocals, I show a lot of techniques in my course. Um, so for example, you can use um, Gatekeeper or LFO that would be like VST based um, things. You can also use uh, stuff like the utility for gating or a gate, which you um, externally trigger. And then you get something more in that direction, which is um, maybe a bit more evolving as it doesn't repeat um, the same vocal shot so which is also cool I mean both has its applications um, but I think it's cool if you have a lot of tools um, for your track ideas and your repertoire so it can sound something like this I hope you enjoyed this little technique on manipulating vocals um, to make rhythms out of it. And if you want to see more, I have another technique I used in my track, The Cosmic Lion, and I describe it in detail in this video, which you can watch next.